Hey, Omnibus Collectors, it's Riley from Population Ghost Comic Department. I'm doing another Omnibus of the Week, and this time I'm going to be talking about Jason Aaron's Punisher Max Omnibus from Marvel. Collecting the entire 22-issue Punisher Max series that Jason Aaron wrote a few years ago, uh, along with a Punisher Max Christmas special one-shot. Uh, most of the artwork in the book is done by Steve Dillon, who is a frequent collaborator with writer Garth, Garth Ennis. And the two of them together did a lot of uh, Punisher material before, during Ennis's run. Uh, Jason Aaron's book is pretty reminiscent to the style of Garth Ennis' run with the Punisher. So if you did enjoy that, then this is definitely one to look into. Uh, the book itself, looking at the uh, physical construct of the book, how it's built and stuff, uh, it's a pretty thin one. Uh, Marvel has, for the past year or so, uh, used thinner stock paper, so it has cut down the size of the Omnis. Uh, so this one's pretty thin, almost the size of a standard oversized hardcover that they release. Um, but it is a $100 book, so kind of, you know, it, it seems like a big price for such a small book, but I'll talk about that more later. Uh, so it's got the dust jacket on it. The dust jacket is pretty standard for Marvel Omnibuy. It has a nice front image. The back uh, actually is a little different because usually there's a, a cover roll that shows all the covers of all the issues inside the book. The back cover of this one obviously doesn't have that. Instead we have an image of Frank Castle from one of uh, the uh, covers to the uh, series that Dave Johnson did. Uh, on the spine, instead of saying Marvel Omnibus, it says Max Omnibus, so it kind of stands out from the rest of the Omnibuy on the shelves. Punisher Max in the font that is used on the cover. Jason Aaron and Steve Dillon get the cover credits, and you got a nice little silhouetted image of Frank on there. So it's dust jacket, and then the actual hardcover, on there you get, it's uh, Frank holding a gun over a picture of him and his family. That's another of the Dave Johnson images, and you get another silhouette of Frank on the back. The spine is blank. Uh, this is also different from most of the Marvel Omnibuy. Uh, for the past few that they've released, they've started to put these images on the actual hardcover instead of the classic way where it was just a black or a dark blue cover with the title embossed on the front. Uh, so they, they've kind of changed from that to this more stylized hardcover. On the inside, let's see first few pages we have a credit page, some more nice uh, Dave Johnson artwork, and then it goes straight into the comic. And as for back matter, uh, we've got some variant, a variant cover for number one, and then there's some script, some of uh, Jason Aaron's script with some sketches from Steve Dillon on there. Some nice pen and ink from Steve Dillon, and that's about it. So that's all the, the extras, that's everything. Uh, the binding on it, take a look at that real quick. Marble's still doing great with that binding, it stays open. That ribbon is in place. Now you can open this and it will stay open from page 1 to the last page of the book. Uh, it's really great binding for, for, you know, people who collect these books. Binding is a really important thing because the thicker the book, sometimes the binding gets uh, more muddled up and it's harder to read the books because they, uh, you know, you open it and just snaps closed. Uh, but Marvel has done really well with their binding uh, on the majority of their omnibus releases. Uh, it's mostly DC Comics that has the issues with those and... I'll cover one of those in the future and compare the binding on that. 
So it's it's a really well constructed book. Really, you know, nice nicely put together, nice cover images, nice, you know, hardcover and stuff. Um, but as I mentioned before, it is pretty thin. The paper is a little thinner than what Marvel used to use on their Omnis. Uh, it's a little hard to tell, but it's not so thin that it wrinkles and warps, uh, and it doesn't, uh, you know, you, you can't see through the pages. Uh, that, that was an issue with the Infinity hardcover that Marvel released with their recent Infinity event, was that people would have pages that would warp and wrinkle right after they removed that cellophane wrapper. And the, uh, you know, you can see straight through one page to the material on the next one. On, on this, on these pages, thankfully, you don't get that. So it's, it's a better page quality than that. And it's really, you know, you'd hope for that if you're going to shell out about $100 on this book. Uh, now, I always recommend shopping online to find these books. My store of choice would be InStockTrades.com because on the first week of release, these volumes, these Omnis, and these more expensive books are half off. Now, after the first week, they're always going to be roughly 40 to 45% off, uh, so you can still find it on there. Uh, if it's not available for half off, you can get it for about $60, which is a pretty good deal um, if you consider the fact that each of the four standard hardcover volumes that comprised this series were $25 books to begin with. And those four are out of print, so if you're someone who prefers hardcover to paperback like I am, uh, this is really the cheapest way to grab the series. Uh, it's, it is, you know, a little expensive. $100 is usually not the price Marvel gives to something that has, you know, just around 20 issues in it. Usually a 20 or so issue omnibus would be $75 from Marvel. Um... But I think that because of the the name behind it, it's it's a Jason Aaron book, and Jason Aaron's really one of Marvel's hottest uh, writers right now. Uh, that's kind of why they were you know prompted to push the price up to a hundred dollars rather than pricing it at seventy five. Um, I'm not upset with having paid you know I, I paid fifty dollars for the book. I think it's well worth it. It's a really great story. So if, if you're going to put $50 to $60 down, I'm going to tell you it's worth it. Now, as for the material in the book, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the Punisher. I love the character. I love the ideas behind the character. I just haven't read a ton of Punisher material. That said, this has to be my favorite run on the Punisher that I've read. Uh, the book looks at an aging Frank Castle in the last you know, throws of his career as the Punisher. We get a look back at what made him the Punisher, not just at the typical origin of his family being gunned down and him going out for vengeance, but we get a different twist on it. Um, and I don't want to spoil it, but it's, it's a really cool idea. I think Jason Aaron really makes it work in this book. So that goes on, and, uh, you know, Frank basically decides he's getting old, he can't deal with this stuff anymore, he's tired of all the crime, and he decides it's time to wipe out all the crime, and uh, he's going to take out this so-called kingpin of crime that's shown up all of a sudden. So we see Frank go after the kingpin, you see, you know, Wilson Fisk's wife is in there, you have Bullseye is in there, you have Elektra, there's plenty of characters from the Marvel Universe proper that make appearances in this book uh, going up against Frank, but they're new versions of those characters. They're not the same characters that we know. It's not the same Elektra. It's not the same Bullseye. It's not the same Kingpin that we knew before. Uh, they have, you know, obviously same properties and same characteristics of those characters, but they exist in a world that's now more grounded. This Max world is not a world where we have superpowers and mutants and supervillains. This is a very grounded world, and this is a look at what it would be like for someone like Frank Castle to really exist in our universe, how he would deal and how his life would play out. You know, how would someone actually play out their life as this violent vigilante if they existed in our universe? And I'll tell you, it's not pretty. Uh, the artwork is, except for the Christmas special, all by Steve Dillon. Steve Dillon is famous for his collaborations with Garth Ennis on 
the Preacher series from Vertigo and on his uh, Punisher work from Marvel. Uh, he also did a bunch of issues of the Wolverine Origins series with Daniel Way. Uh, there's a lot of people who really don't like Steve Dillon's artwork. Uh, it is a little bit different. It's not well suited to open up to a good page here. It's not too well suited for um, superhero stuff, but I think that he works really well to show off uh, these more grounded stories and he definitely knows how to do violence really well. I'm going to try and not to flip open to a too graphic of a page just to keep this, you know, okay for audiences that are watching the video. But, um, see, uh, Dylan's work, I think it works really well here. He's obviously, he's familiar with these characters. He's familiar with the Punisher and that universe. And so his, his work comes out really well here. And he's always good with the violence. He's good at showing grit and blood and gore. Uh, but in a way that's not too over excessive and you know he's not ex exerting something that's unbelievable um, so if, if you're not a fan of Steve Dillon you probably still won't be a fan of his work here but I guarantee that this would be one of the better places that you'd see his work um, or if you went in the red preacher that would be one of the better places I, I think often it depends on who's inking and who's coloring his his material and depending on the colorist it can come off as a little strange looking, especially the way that he draws uh, eyes, because he draws eyes more human. Uh, he doesn't do that, you know, glossing over of the eyes when, when superheroes are wearing masks or anything, which is why his, his work is weird on superhero work, but this isn't a superhero book, so you don't have to worry about that here. Uh, so, all in all, this is a, a pretty great book. The story is, is just fantastic. The artwork, I think, really, really works well here. There's a lot of fantastic character work, great story, uh, awesome action and violence throughout. But it's really Jason Aaron's writing that just shines through. And if you're a fan of Jason Aaron and the previous material that he's done on other series like Scalped and his work with Wolverine and, and the X-Men books, then I think that you should check this out. It's a great title a great little revival of uh, Marvel's Max line. And though it is a little pricey, I definitely recommend it. If you have the money, definitely pick it up. So that's been our new installment of Omnibus of the Week, covering Jason Aaron's Punisher Max Omnibus from Marvel's uh, Max line. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe, press the like button, leave some comments below, I, more or less, I, I respond to all the comments that I get on my videos. I, I love to have some feedback, and I love to talk about, you know, everything that's been happening. Feel free to ask any more questions that you have about the book. And, you know, again, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time.